radiating from the Lone Star State and stretching from coast to coast and border to border. This is On Radio, the weekly download from your family of companies, CMS Wireless, Entertech, ET Tower, Legacy, and Mountain Wireless. Welcome to On Radio. Folks, welcome back to On Radio. We live in a wireless world and we're focused on bringing you the news, the newsmakers, and all the stuff that is pertinent to our wireless industry. Uh, my name is Jim Tracy. I'm your host. And today we have two very special guests. They have been um, in the wireless industry for a long time. And uh, not as long as me because they're not that old. They're still good looking and that kind of stuff. But today we're going to talk about moving around in the wireless world. And I'm talking about when you're on a crew. You go out and it's a world of planes, trains, and automobiles, but truthfully, mostly dirty trucks. And we're going to talk about life on the road and what it's like. Please welcome Kevin Wright and Justin Miller, who are longtime members of our wireless industry. Hey, fellas. Good morning, Jim. This hey, is the Jim. part where you say hi, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to talk over you there, Kevin. So sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, right, and I'm going to let you quit leave. being polite. We're on a really fun podcast. Hi, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> I'm well, Jim. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm not a sir. Uh, anyway, um, you know, our folks in the industry, they go out and they go on the road and some of them are on the road pretty extensively. They're sacrificing for their families. They're sacrificing for their employers. They're sacrificing, obviously, for our customers and for their crewmates, which is a big deal. When you when you live out of a truck and out of a hotel room and you're eating fast food, say, uh, you have to get along really well with your crewmates. You have to, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like being married only worse times 10. So you have to like <laughs> figure out a way to get along. Um, so tell us, I mean, you guys got to ha- establish some street cred here. So Kevin, tell us how long you've been in the industry and a little bit about your background, where you live, that kind of thing. Right on. Yeah. So, uh, this year will be my 21st year in the industry. Um, not on the construction side, but in the industry as a whole. Um, Started out on the road with my dad. My dad had a small business. uh, And as we were talking a a little bit earlier, he had had a lot of experience in oil and gas uh, right away, leasing right away for oil and gas pipeline. And he had a good buddy of his um, who told him that cell phones were the way of the future back in the the 90s. And my dad thought he was (laughs) crazy, but decided uh, after spending 15 years in oil and gas, my grandfather, 36 years uh, with Exxon, oil and gas, Exxon Chemical, uh, he made the leap over to cell phones. And uh, we started a small site acquisitions company and uh, it developed uh, over the years to me, you know, getting in with the the customers, the AT&Ts, the Verizons, the T-Mobiles, the Sprints, and uh, Fell in love with this industry. Did it while I was going to, to college. Uh, currently have a civil engineering degree uh, from the University of West Florida. Perfect. Um, but just stuck with my dad. Spent a lot of time on the What's road. What's the mascot? The Argonauts. We're, What's we're the mascot the, the, of the University of West Florida? The Argonauts. The Argos. The Argonauts? Argonauts? Are you serious? Yes. I can't even spell that. Yeah. <laughs> Tough word to spell. Tough word to spell. All right. Sweet <clears throat> so, deal. Yeah. 21 years, man. Been a long time. 21 years. Well, here's a salute. I don't give them out easy. Justin, you've been around for a while too, haven't you? I have, Jim. I've uh, professionally, we'll call it the professional life was about 17 years. Uh, Unprofessional, that's called uh, under the child labor laws that we don't speak of in these days. (laughs) I've been uh, assembling bolts and sorting bolts and stacking steel in, in warehouses for a lot longer than that. So, uh, yeah, 17 mm-hmm. years as a, in a professional manner, uh, grew up in uh, a little bit in East Texas ranch in New Mexico and have resided in Colorado for the past 22 years. All right. So you're up at elevation, like 7,000 feet or something. Yes, sir. 79, uh, 43 exactly. mountain man, almost eight grand. All right. Well, folks, um, we're going to talk to these guys about road warriors. And I want you guys to know road warriors can actually be good coaches, 
not not just uh, not just take us in in uh, in bad places. Um, so I want you to help the guys who might be in their first year, in their first hey, in their first decade of wireless. Um, so the first thing you get is you got to get in a truck, and you got to get in a truck. Sometimes somebody you don't know very well, and you head out in a direction that is away from home, and you can be gone a week or weeks or even a month maybe even longer on a big job and uh, and you're away from the people you love and you're with people that you may not necessarily like their smell at the end of the first day. Um, Justin, tell me about how you learn to get along with a crewmate in a truck for that long. You got to learn pretty quickly the personality differences in between each one of the crew members, right? You don't want to you don't want to come in bullheaded with a big head and I've been there, done it all, seen it all. Cause you're sitting in a truck with potentially an individual that is significantly more experienced than you. So the first piece of advice to any crew member out there is come in with the most humble head possible so that you don't get crushed in experience and knowledge and look like a fool. That's my yeah. first piece of advice. All right. The second piece of advice that I would say is sit in the back seat. Don't think that you've <laughs> earned the right to jump up into the passenger seat if you're a three-man to a truck. If yeah. you're a two-man to a truck, okay, you got it. But if you're a three-man to a truck, don't jump in the front seat. You haven't earned that yet. You sit in the back seat. <laughs> yeah. And and you learn to earn the stripe. So those are two two out the out out the gate. You know what else I found is that when you get in the back seat, the first inclination is to fall asleep. And, and and that's the last thing you should do. You should be asking questions about your trade and figure out which end of the bolt goes up and which end of the bolt goes out. So you don't look like a yutz when it comes down to actually assembling a tower, right? Ask questions. Now you got a brain trust sitting in front of you in the front seat. You, you, you took Justin's advice. You didn't jump in and say, hey, I'm shotgun. Um, that's what 12-year-olds do, and we're not. And so uh, jump in that backseat and, and drain that brain trust, right? Absolutely. All right. So, Kevin, now you find yourself in a, in a cab with somebody, and you're, it's just kind of obvious. You're, you're not getting along too well. What do you do? For me, I mean, Jim, you know this. You've been around me before. I'm a big talker. And, and if you're not getting along with somebody, I would say start over and, and try to ask them about their, their personal life. Get away from the, the work environment. If you're, you're being too overbearing, ask them some personal questions. Tell them about maybe you've got some kids. Talk about family. Try to lighten the mood. Maybe change the scenario because I know that that's, that's real world stuff that's happened with my guys instantly not clicking and calling me, what am I supposed to do? Ask them about their family. Maybe they're struggling <laughs> in their personal life. Ask them about their family. Maybe help them get something off their sure. chest. Who is this loser you stuck in my truck? Give me a hand here. Well, you know what? <laughs> we have to adult here. So let's figure it out. And then, yep. so now you've driven and you've been in the road for six hours and you got a stage on a job site, you unload the truck and then you drive back and you go to this motel. Well, we all know motels can be good and motels can be bad. They can be horrible. Um, how do you go about, I mean, when you're on the road, you don't want to stay at the Taj Mahal because you come in and you're a mess. I mean, you've been working out in the mud and the snow and the sand and the, all, all this stuff. And, and now you come in and you got to strip that first layer of Carhartts off and you're like leaving cakes of mud on this fancy hotel carpet. So you don't really want to stay at the Taj Mahal. How do you pick a good hotel? Justin. It starts with. All right, proximity to your location where you get to travel, right? Like, look, be practical. Don't go yeah. out of your way. Be practical. Understand that you got to find a suitable hotel. And so sometimes that narrows the field, right? When that yeah. narrows the oh, field, yeah. we we, we got to be, you got to be selective. So you can do the, all right, your passenger is looking at the the reviews. They can try that method. I, I for one, used to call, right? A lot of people don't like actually call anymore to the hotel. And my guys all knew that I was talking to a hotel because I would automatically develop what they called the hotel voice. The hotel <laughs> voice was 
an instrument that I use to elevate the uh, professionalism that I was to be able to negotiate a better rate. Because yeah. I usually was coming in and I was going to maybe be on a long project. And I'm so I'm using the hotel voice and I'm saying, yeah. you know, <clears throat> yes, I'd like uh, um, three rooms tonight, uh, one man per room. Oh, scratch that. I need uh, two rooms, one person uh, in one room, two persons in another room. And, the, and by elevating the voice and using that, that was a gauge that I was a professional. So I would call the nicer hotels first and negotiate you know, like a Hampton, a Hilton, a, a Marriott, a Holiday Inn Express, a Best Western. I'd go through that list, use the voice to try to negotiate a better rate because I was going to stay there longer. Yeah. And half time, half the time, it actually would work. They'd Heck start yeah. out, it'd start out like uh, 135 a night. I'm saying, man, I got three rooms. We've got a lot of work coming up. I've got, you know, four or five projects in the area, maybe. And <laughs> it would come back and it was like, ah, we'll give it to you for 98. Done. Here it is. Credit card yeah. over the phone. And well, so what, what pick, about asking them the rack rate? Like, are you, ma'am, are you giving me the rack rate? You got to use their language, don't you? That's I mean, right. You're, you're, ma'am, I'm sorry. You're giving me the rack rate and, and I'm a, actually a nice person. That's right. Or if you're getting, <laughs> or if you're getting a government rate, depending on where you work, sometimes we do work for government. Now, a lot of times they want you to show a government ID, but if you got a silver tongue, there might be an opportunity there for you to go, yeah, we got a government rate, but we're working as a contractor and we're not employees of the government, but they extend the rate to us right. to where we can get it. So that's one way of looking or at AAA. it. And it's not, that's right. One way. Triple A might work. Yeah. But I think selecting hotels, if it's in such a remote area and you got like two choices, it comes down to lighting. I kid you not. It's lighting in the parking garage or parking area. And yep. it's... I I've always gauged this. It's the, it's the type of like shrubs and trees that are on the outside. If it's got barren and it's just naked and ugly guaranteed, it's probably the same kind of room and it's rough and it's not mm -hmm. cleaned a lot on the inside. So yeah. it's just like a person's house, right? If you go by somebody's house and it looks well groomed, well, nice, typically it's that way on the inside. Well, hotels are a lot like the same way in my yeah. experience. Sweet. So, Kevin, um, when you're pulling up to the hotel and you're looking for this stuff, like Justin told us, what, what, how are you making these decisions when you're rolling in? As far as the, looking at the shrubs, <laughs> I mean, well, he, he's you know, Jim. He's uh, right. The I, I'm as we are laughing, security. Yeah, he, he's right. I mean, the, the way they take care of the property will probably be very similar to the way that their employees take care of the rooms. And and yeah. being in this industry, as you said in the beginning, uh, you've been in this long enough that you've stayed in every genre of hotel there is to offer. Um, something yeah. that, that I, I try to do, or at least I tell my guys to do, and it's hard it's hard to, to, to pick and choose because, like Justin said, you've got two choices in some areas. But I have my guys try to find uh, hotels where the – entrance and exit doors are on the inside instead of the outside. So you've got, you have to go in through the lobby or you have to go in through a back door. And the only way to get into your room is from a hallway inside. A lot of the outward facing doors can be sketchy. I've stayed in sketchy hotels with outward facing doors and have had people try to get in because you can, anyone can yeah. walk up and, and try to get in. So that's something just to build upon what Justin said. That's something that I try to tell my guys, try not to stay at the motels that have the exits and entrance on the outside of the building. Try to stay one. You, you might pay a little bit more, but it's safety and security. You know, yeah, I think you that's... know that Motel 6 will leave the light on for you. They might leave the light on for you, but they have no room in that room for you to stack any equipment. No. And, and security is a big deal on the road, isn't it? For sure. The, the, something I was picking up on with Kevin is like when I worked down in the so Southern look 48 right in your country florida on the gulf i agree you don't want motels because of just all the the the, the, the potential issues but in the north i've learned you want a motel because you want to be able to back your truck up grill do everything right there and it's way easier to take a all the boxes of gear and shuffle it into a motel lock the door and then like crack the window if it's summertime so i can listen for anybody walking by messing with my truck that's what yeah. I used to. I mean, that that was like 
everything. But I agree with you, Kevin. Like in the South, I never, I never wanted to stay at the motels. I always wanted to stay in anywhere that had a gate. If yeah, it had yeah. a gate to be able to go into the motel, that was your ticket. You wanted a place yeah. with a gate. And and then you still take everything in. I never left anything in my truck. I wouldn't I wouldn't leave my like Altoids can. I I kid you not. I would take and almost clear out the entire cab of the truck. My guys hated it. They were like, Justin, you're taking like an extra twenty minutes every night to take everything out, and then taking another twenty minutes to put it all back in. I was like, well, at least I got all my crap. I don't lose anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a uh, I was in a hotel in Washington state and, and, uh, I walked out in the parking lot and this is a pretty decent place. I walked out of the parking lot and I saw this guy, he was his, his pickup truck toolbox had been broken into. And I thought, Oh, that poor guy, man, that really, that's terrible. I, I'm glad I'm not him. I went over my truck's fine. I'm like, I opened the door and there's glass everywhere. And I looked over the passenger's window had been smashed through and guess what? My laptop was gone. Oh, bad, man. hard lesson. Security oh. at hotels is super important, right, Kevin? Absolutely. And, and Just, Justin's right. I haven't spent much time in the north where you guys are, and it makes perfect sense. But down here in the south, avoid the outward-facing doors. Take as much as you can in and avoid the outward-facing doors. Because those outward-facing doors, they let critters in too, don't they? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm sure we could spend a lot of time on this podcast talking about all the critters that yeah. tried to get indoors in some of the areas I've stayed in. Yeah, if it slithers, snakes, bites, stings, it probably is uh, headed for Kevin's door. I'm, There's, I'm talking I'll, I'll two legs, four no... legs, eight legs, no legs, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than, you know, you work a really long day. You're, you're, you're dead dog tired. You've only had one. So sometimes only one motel choice, right? I was in outside of like Sheridan, Wyoming, not in Sheridan, Wyoming, outside of Sheridan, Wyoming, about 85 miles. I don't even remember this podunk little town, but there's a guy that used to work with us, Owen Eccles. Yeah, Owen, if you're listening, you'll, you'll love this story. We were tired, man. It was a long day. We got into the motel. I I don't even think I took my my clothes off. I was so exhausted. I took my boots off, and thank you. I for just, that. I, yeah, <laughs> I took my boots off, and I just laid down. I didn't even get underneath the covers. I just laid down, and I fell asleep. But I woke up to the cripply crawly all the way across my face. And I don't know if it was the largest rat in the world or cockroaches oh or what, but I, <laughs> I slept the rest of the night in the truck because yeah. it was, there was nowhere else to go. Yeah. It was absolutely the worst experience in a motel for me. Ah, something crawling on your face. And it was big. It was not like a little bitty, like light thing. It was like, in, 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 and then I like, Woke up and I'm like watching a dark object leave the bed. I'm like, nope, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to the truck. Hey, let's go camping instead, right? Yeah. <laughs> at least the at least the tent will protect us. Yeah. Well, folks, I want to thank you for tuning into on radio again. We've been blessed to have two of the guys who spent a long time on the road give you some wisdom. And as we say every day at On Radio, hey, let's all choose safety today. Thanks, fellas. This is Jim, and I am out.